Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. As subscribers know, this weekend was a pretty good weekend for us, right? A couple of underdogs won outright. Paulie Malinaji won the Battle of Brooklyn. Sean Porter is now wearing Devin Alexander's belt. You should have done well on both of those plays, especially the Porter play, right? But let me let you in on a secret. It actually takes me some time to watch these fights, right? Um, you know, when I don't see the fights live, I actually have to go back to the tape and look at the fights. Some rounds are more important than others, and uh, you can imagine that takes time. So this video isn't for the Malinaji fight, the Porter fight, the Sakio Bika fight. I had Bika in that fight. It ended in a draw, right? Or any of the other fights, the Chris John fight, perhaps this weekend's most important fight, right? I haven't yet seen the full tape on all of those fights. I have seen the Chris John fight, not the others. This video is limited to just a quick post-fight analysis of Felix Sturm's surprising two-round demolition of Darren Barker. Felix Sturm, if you don't know, now is wearing the belt that Darren Barker won from Daniel Gill, right? Let me just say, this fight is a great fight. I recommend it to everyone because it ended in the second round with Barker's corner throwing in the towel. It's a quick fight to watch. Let me point out, too, both of these guys are highly skilled. Both of these guys are technicians. Both of these guys know what they're doing. Neither of these guys wanted to run and hide. This fight is hostile. It's aggressive from the opening bell. A lot is packed into these two rounds. Let's talk about it first. And this fight's surprising. I did not make a pre-fight video on this fight. Right? But this is a fight I was very interested in. This fight's surprising because Sturm is really known as a guy who relies on a left jab, right? Felix Sturm is one of those guys who is more cautious than reckless, right? He's a guy who likes to fight at a measured pace, right? Kind of like Chris John. He keys everything off of a left jab. He keeps spacing and distance in the ring. If you cannot get by his left jab, you lose the fight. It's just that simple. Keep in mind, too, this fight's in Germany, where, by reputation, maybe it's not true, but it certainly seems that way, German fighters, at least fighters fighting out of Germany, and that includes you, Johan Hernandez, cruiserweight champion, seem to get preferential treatment on the scorecards and in the ring with the referee, right? And so here you had Darren Barker. British champion, coming to Germany, and there were concerns. Was Barker going to get a fair shake, right? As people know, the last thing I want to see is a champion come in the ring, not get beaten, right? I'm one of those guys who believes you have to take the champ's belt, right? I don't want to see a champ not get beaten in the ring, but yet get beaten on the scorecards. So, I'm looking at the first round. One would think, given the success Felix Sturm has had in Germany, and I'm aware that Daniel Giel beat Felix Sturm in Germany, right? I believe the judges had to give Giel that fight, because Giel clearly beat Felix Sturm in Germany, in my opinion, in that fight. But, right, given that Sturm likes to operate from distance, and he's before the home fans, and the German judges like Sturm style, right? Germany likes precision, right? Sebastian Sylvester, Felix Sturm, guys out of a defensive stance who keep you at a distance behind a rhythmic Mercedes-Benz-like piston-type jab, right? I thought Sturm was going to be a little bit more cautious. Try to have this fight go a few rounds. Try to make the scoring of the fight an issue. 
First round opens. Felix Sturm's not even throwing a jab. This is why boxing's a great sport. Felix Sturm comes out aggressively. It's as if Felix Sturm thought he was the outsider in Germany. Felix Sturm is throwing not a lead left jab. He's throwing a lead left hook. It's beautiful. Darren Barker comes out. Forget the reports that you've read that Darren Barker wasn't ready for this fight. Barker is ready. Barker comes out ready to trade. These guys are literally trading punches. Think about it. Right? This is high level stuff. You have Sturm trying to throw a left hook. You have Darren Barker trying to get to Sturm's body. Right? It's actually really good stuff. Barker also, and this is crucial for what happens in the second round. Barker comes in and he throws punches and then Barker invades Sturm's space. Right? He literally leans in and smothers Sturm, right? So Barker on occasion has his shoulder on Sturm's chest, right? Barker then, and it's interesting, this is all in a condensed few minutes of the fight. Barker then is testing out different punches, just like Sturm tests out the left hook early. Barker starts testing out a short right uppercut. Keep in mind, Barker's right-handed. So to throw that uppercut, it's his dominant hand. It's not his lead hand like Sturm's lead left hook. This is actually his backhand. But Barker is so skilled. Barker is a skilled fighter. That Barker starts throwing a nice short right uppercut. He throws it several times. Well, we get to the second round. And in the second round, Felix Sturm starts backing up, right? Barker is continuing to try to land that short right uppercut. But here's where it gets really interesting. So I'm watching Barker dipping down to land this left uppercut. I'm looking at the fight. This is a tape of the fight. I know the ending of the fight already, but I haven't yet seen the fight. So I'm thinking, okay, well, this is a mistake by Barker because when he dips to throw that left uppercut, Felix Sturm has a shot at a left hook, right? I thought, okay, well, I see what's coming. Barker's going to dip to throw that short right uppercut, which he was landing. And Sturm's going to catch him on the way in with a left hook. That's not how it goes, folks. It's actually even better than that. Felix Sturm throws his own right uppercut. It causes Barker to bring his hand here. Then Felix Sturm starts throwing punches, right hands, to the side of Barker's head. In other words, Sturm, Sturm sees Barker with his hands here, and Sturm starts targeting the side of Barker's head. Now, longtime watchers of Barker know that he got taken out on a headshot by Sergio Martinez. The fight to focus on isn't the Daniel Gill Barker fight, where Barker gets dropped off a body shot. I believe the fight to look at here is the Sergio Martinez fight. Because Felix Sturm goes up top, hits him on the side of the head. Barker's still standing. Then Sturm comes back. Same right hand. Target practice on the side of Barker's head. That's the rest of the fight. He hits him a second time on the side of Barker's head. Barker goes down. 
That's the first knockdown. When Barker gets up, understand this temple area affects your balance. What I want you to do is to look at Barker's legs. They're gone. Right? That's the first time he goes down. You know what happens the rest of the way. Sturm realizes that he can hit pay dirt, hitting Barker on the side of the head. Sturm knows that Barker's equilibrium is gone. Sturm, usually a cautious guy, is chomping at the bit to throw that right hand. He throws it several more times, eventually lands again on the side of Barker's head. Barker goes down a second time. Barker gets off the canvas. But understand, Barker's mistake in not covering up the side of his head dooms him. Because when he gets up, his legs are clearly not cooperating with the rest of his body. He looks shaky. His corner, knowing that Barker has a rematch clause in the contract and knowing that their fighter is badly hurt. In other words, his equilibrium is rocked. You get hit in the side of the head, you lose your equilibrium, you might never get it back the rest of the fight. They throw in the towel. The reason why this fight is a great fight is because both of these guys are highly skilled and they're trying different punches at different parts of the fight. You see both guys thinking. Right Sturm, left hook at the very beginning of it. Barker, short uppercut. Right Felix Sturm, first he's in the middle of the ring with Barker. Second round, he's off at the side of the ropes. And while Barker comes in, and keep in mind, Barker's throwing heavy artillery. That uppercut's not the only thing he's done with his right hand. He tries some right crosses. While Barker is trying to figure out the winning formula, Felix Sturm sees what's going on and himself is throwing different punches. So I thought it's interesting because it's a short right hook that brings Barker's hands here. Then Sturm goes outside Barker's hand to hit him on the side of the head. And when he hits Barker the first time there, he realizes that's the winning ticket. So, of course, then he's coming back with wide shots. And people who know Felix Sturm know that Felix Sturm's not a mid-range hooker. He's a jab and distance guy. It's only when he sees the path to victory that Felix Sturm, who's not a knockout puncher, decides to step on the gas and go for the knockout, which he gets in the second round. Right, so this fight is a great chess match. Right, this fight had it all in less than six minutes of action. Right, Darren Barker was prepared, Felix Sturm was prepared. Both of these guys are safe crackers. Felix Sturm just happened to figure out the combination before Darren Barker did. Right, I want you to pay attention to the fact that Sturm tries the left hook early. Barker tries to go to the body early, right? Barker then comes up with a short right uppercut, right? Felix Sturm then figures out that he can hit Barker on the side of the head. And keep in mind, Barker is an advanced fighter who comes in and will put a shoulder on your body. The problem with that is if you pivot, Barker doesn't have a hand up at the side of his head to prevent you from hitting him there, right? And Barker doesn't take punches well to the side of the head. This is the second time he's been stopped primarily on headshots. Understand, folks, those are the only two times Barker has been stopped in his career. He was almost stopped by Gil on a body shot. He got up, stayed on his feet, and won the title, right? The two guys he's been stopped, Martinez and now Sturm, have been on shots to the side of his head. Hope you give the fight a look. Let me hear from you. What take do you have on the fight? 
What am I missing here? Leave your analysis here in the comment section and also tell us if you're Darren Barker. Do you take the rematch with Felix Stern? The one thing I can guarantee you is if Barker does take the rematch with Stern, he's going to have a hand up on the side of his head. No question about it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.